Kong. I'm just doing a little bit of spring cleaning. You know, it's been rather rainy outside, so not much else I can do. Well, I need to get back to this, so here, listen to this story. The rainy season began in early summer, and June had been no exception. It did not surprise the man when he discovered rainwater dripping from his dining room ceiling. Shrugging it off, he placed a tall pot beneath the leak and expected it to stop on its own. However, it continued to rain, and before he knew it, the pot would threaten to overflow. He had to dump the water out first thing in the morning and straight after he returned home from work. Eventually, he began to notice water damage at the source of the leak. The white ceiling had discolored, turning a dull shade of brown. He checked the weather and realized it would continue to rain sporadically over the next ten days. The man was worried about the ceiling mildewing and becoming an expensive repair, so he called a local handyman. Unfortunately, the man could not sign to have the repairs done. Only his landlord could. It was a frustrating policy. The man called his landlord, but could not reach him. He left him a few voicemails detailing how the damage was becoming progressively worse. The man was clueless as to why his landlord would not return his calls. They usually kept in touch speaking at least twice a month. Finally, he reasoned that he would not be held accountable for any damages sustained. One night, the man was startled awake by a massive thump. He quickly turned on his bedside lamp, and just vaguely, he could see an overturned table and a large shape laying across it. He sprinted out of his apartment and called the police gagging at the smell. While the man waited, he called his landlord and finally reached him. Panicking, he explained the situation. His landlord was just as alarmed, and the man pleaded for him to come to the station while he made his statement. The man paused as the detective crossed over to him and lowered his phone, wondering if the body had been identified. His blood ran immediately cold, and he shook his head with terror. The body belonged to Richard Thompson, his landlord and he had died over a year ago. That's not what disturbed him the most. If his landlord was dead, then who was pretending to be him? Oh, you're back already! Well, you know, most people tend to keep their skeletons in the closet, but I always kept mine in the attic. Until I read that story, that is. Well... I guess I need to find a new place to put Dale's bones. Maybe in the backyard? I don't know, I'll figure something out. But I need to continue on this, so I guess that's all for the night. And remember, hold on to your skin. Heaven knows Dale didn't. Ta-ta. Thank you.